Hi everyone, in this video we will study how to find out if a particular integer is present in an array. So we are going to look at what is known as linear search. So we are going to search an array and find out if a particular element that we are looking for is present in the array or not. Now, once again, if you looked at my previous example, you would have seen this particular statement, which is import the class scanner because we are going to take inputs from the user. Now, this is our class, public class linear search example, in which our main is defined. Now, if you're looking at this video and you're a little confused as to why the main is within linear search example, I really uh, want you to look at the previous videos on this playlist so that you understand how the main method is defined in Java. Now, let's go into the particular problem that we are studying. And we're going to find out if a particular element is present in the array. To do that, we are going to define multiple variables, counter, num, and item, three variables of type int. Now we are also going to define an array. Okay, An array is of type int, in this case, is going to be able to hold multiple integers. That's why it's an array. So it's an array of integers. So depending if on the size of the array, say if the array is of size 5, it will be able to hold 5 integers. If the array is of size 6, it will be able to hold 6 integers. Now here we have not defined the size of the array. We are going to ask that from the user and then define the size of the array. Okay, So that's why there is no argument present within these squared brackets defining the size of the array. Okay, So next we go and ask the user for input. That's why we have this particular statement here, which is scanner input equals new scanner system dot in. If you don't understand how to take inputs from the user, I recommend that you watch the previous video on this playlist, which would tell you how to get you inputs from the user. So here we are just trying to ask the user to give us such inputs. Now we ask the user the number of elements that the user wants to store in this array. We take that and store it in num. So num equals input dot int next. So int next is a method which input is going to call. So input is an object or instance of class scanner and that's next int is a method defined in the scanner class. As input is an object of class scanner, it can class that method. Okay. So we don't want to go deep into to how to get inputs from the user because that is not the important part to focus on when you're learning how to code. You need to understand the logic. So for now, you just can assume that this is the, these are three lines that you have to write to actually get inputs from the user. Okay. So now, once you've said that, okay, the user gives an input saying that maybe he or she wants an array of size four. Okay. So that's what is going to be stored in. Now, if the user inputs say 10, 10 is the size of the array that the user wants. So now what we do is we create an array to store all the numbers or all the integers that the user is going to input. So that is what this particular statement means. Array equals new int num. Okay. So we are creating the array of size as specified by the user. And it's an integer array because we have int here. So whenever you want to dynamically create an array of a particular size, not a fixed size. Note that we haven't specified the size of the array when we created it. We're dynamically trying to create an array of a specific type. So what you do is you define an array here, but you don't specify what the size of the array is. And then whatever size you want to want array to have, you can uh, assign it using this particular statement that array equals new int and with num within those square brackets. Okay, so you're dynamically creating an array of desired size. Now, what you're going to ask the user to do in say in 16 is enter the number of integers. So if say num is five, you're going to ask the, the user to enter five integers. Okay, so now you're going to store each of those integers in this array. Okay, you've called the array array itself. So you're going to store all those in this array. Now, important thing to remember in Java is the index of the array starts from zero. So if you have an array of five elements, the first element will be at index zero. 
that is array zero. Here I'm just going to write here so that you all remember array zero will store first element. Okay, so array zero will store the first element. And if your array is of size five, array four will store the last element. That's how it is. Okay, that's just how Java is designed. So that is why we have a for loop here, which starts from zero. So you can see for counter, we know that we have already defined counter there. So we are initializing counter to zero because the array will start from zero. And then we're going to increase counter or increment counter till now. So counter less than now because the array ends one before now. So if num is five, array would end at four, zero, one, two, three, and four. That's why this loop goes from zero, counter equals zero, all the way to counter equals num minus one. So that's why counter equals zero, counter less than num, counter plus plus. And you get inputs from the user, that is input dot next int. Every time the user in inputs an integer that he or she wants to put into the array, you just put it in that array with array counter. So the first element that the user enters will go into array, array zero, because counter is initially zero. Next counter would be incremented and counter will be now one. So the next input that the user gives will go into count into array one. Then the next input will go into array two and so on and so forth. Okay. Now, until this point, what we have done is we've asked the user, what's the size of the array the user wants to create? Then we have asked inputs from the user and put them in the array. That's what we have done so far. Now we're going to ask the user to enter a particular value. Once again, the value that the user wants to search is taken in item. Once again, using input dot next int. Okay. So whatever the value the user wants to search is put into item. Now the, the remaining portion of the code is where the magic happens to figure out if the input that the user gave, that is basically item, is present in the array or not. This is the hard part. This is the logic of the code. Okay, so let's try to, to understand this. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go through the array again, one by one, starting from position zero, because array begins from zero. Okay, so zero all the way till array num minus one. And we are going to search if the item asked by the user is present in this array or not. Okay, so that is why we are going from counter equals zero, counter less than num, counter plus plus. This is a standard way of going through the array. Okay, then we're going to check if any of the array elements is the same as item. Okay, so we're going to check if item, the item that we are looking for, which the in which we got in line 24 here is present in this array. Okay. Now the important thing to see here is this equal to equal to sign. It's not a single equal to sign. This is a common mistake that students make. When you write an if statement, you sometimes write array counter equal to item. Okay. Equal to is an assignment operator. So if you put a single equal to, that means that whatever is an item is getting assigned to array counter equal to equal to is used for comparison. So here you're going to compare if whatever value is there in array counter is the same as item. That is very important and that's an important distinction. That's why we need these two equal to signs here. So if it is same, then what are you going to do? Then you're going to say that this item is present in this array. So once again, item, the number, whatever we're looking for, and we print this part out that is, is present in the array. Now that we found the, the item that we are looking for, we just break out of this for loop. So break is a statement to get out of this for loop. Okay. Now, so if you encounter, say, uh, an item that you're looking for in, in position one of a five element array. So you already found the item, you're just going to break out of this. So you're not going to loop through the rest of the items of this for loop because you have already found the item, okay? Now, if you don't find the item, what is going to happen? You would have gone through the entire array, 
So you have started at position zero, then position one, and you've checked the position num minus one. Okay. Now, the important thing to notice is when would the for loop stop executing? The for loop would stop executing when counter becomes num because counter is incrementing from zero all the way to num because when it becomes num, it's no longer going to be able to enter into the for loop. So the for, when the for loop terminates in line 35, counter has a value of num. That means that you have exited the for loop or you have a completely gone through the array. You've gone from zero, index zero, all the way to num minus one, and now your counter is at num. So you have gone through the entire array, okay? Now, the, why is this important? If you've gone through the entire array and you have not found the element, you are going to say that you've not found that. To do that check, you say that if counter equals to equal to num, once again, note the equal to equal to here. That is, you have made sure that counter is equal to num, you've gone through the entire array. Then you print out that this item does not exist in the array, okay? So once again, going through this code, what have we done here? We first had the scanner class so that we could take inputs from the user. We created this public class linear search example in which we defined the void main method. And then we had multiple variables, counter, num, and int of type int. And then we had this array, which was also of type int. Array was not statically assigned. We dynamically assigned the array here of a specific size as entered by the user. And then what we did was we asked the user to enter a bunch of integers and we stored them in the array by going through the array using a for loop. Then what we did was we asked the user to enter an integer, which, is, which, we, which we then stored in item, and we then checked if item is present in this array. Well, how did we do that? We went through each and every, every element of the array and then we compared it with item. And the comparison was done with two equal to signs and not a single equal to. Okay. If the item was present, then we just said that the item is present and we just got out of the for loop right there with break. Okay. Now, when you get out the for loop with break, the counter will not be equal to now. It will be less than now. So it will not get into here. Otherwise, if you go through the entire array and you don't find the item, then counter will be equal to now. So you come here, you check that counter equal to now, which means that You've gone through the entire array and the item is not found in the array and you just say that the item does not exist in the array. Okay, so that is the entire code. Let's just see uh, what happens at execution. So I've executed this here. So let's, put, let's try to execute it again. So let's enter the number of elements in this array. Let's enter four. Okay, so we're going to enter four integers. Say one, four, three, six. Now let's try to search a value. So maybe let's just try to search a value which already is present in the array. Say three, okay, try it. three. And it says this three is present in the array. So this code works, okay. Now let's try to search an element which is not present in this array. So we once again run this code. So number of elements, say again is four. Let's enter those numbers, one, three, five and eight we wait and let's enter a search value let's say six so six is not in the array so it should return that that's saying that six is not present in this array so we run this and we see that it says that six does not exist exist in this array so so once again i'll just try to point out that i when you're learning how to code it is good idea to code online because it's, there is less overhead. I've mentioned this in my previous videos as well. I have used this website called JDoodle. Here, you can use other websites as well where you can run and execute your code online itself. It just makes your job way more simpler than actually coding in Eclipse uh, and installing it and trying to figure it out while you're learning how to code. Okay. I hope you found this video useful and stay tuned for more videos of this playlist. Thank you for watching.